At the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of observation and reflection in early childhood education and will be able to confidently answer the following questions. What does observation entail in early childhood education? Why is observation important in this setting and what roles do practitioners play as it relates to observation? We will also look at the scenario that resulted from lack of observation and give solutions to the problem. Finally, we will analyze three observation techniques that were used during our practicum experience that helped with observation of children, classroom environment, and parent-teacher interactions. Observation is more than watching children. It entails, among other things, careful attention to details in the environment, blending into the environment, observing with knowledge of child development in mind, and documentation. In the childhood setting, observation entails looking at each child's unique personality. Thus, the observer has to focus on the holistic development which is social, physical, spiritual and culture. Another aspect of the observer is the observation of the gross motor skills which include the entire body movement. This entails strength exercises such as but not limited to running, jumping, climbing and hopping. Additionally, observation encompasses fine motor skills involving hand-eye coordination and to the developments of the fine manipulation skills. Research shows that an important role of practitioners is that of sharing findings with parents. Also, practitioners have the important role of documenting and assessing their students. In this scenario, the students were given an activity to indicate greater than and less than. Prior to this, the teacher used various methods to engage their understanding, including the use of the right hand bend to indicate greater than and the use of the left hand bend to indicate less than. After this, the teacher gave homework. Based on the homework results, the teacher understood that the children did not grasp the concept. In addition, there are 18 children in this class, one of which I consider to have special needs and four of which do not know the difference between left hand and right hand. In order to resolve this problem, the layout of the classroom should be that of grouping, for example having students in small groups of 4 or 5 according to their need. In grouping children, those who are considered below average would be seated closer to the teacher to get more attention. Here are the observation techniques we use during our practicum experience. Event Sampling Narrative Observation Method Anecdotal Recording Thanks for watching. Created using Powtoon.